Hello and welcome to race two of round one of the Spec 7 racing series. I'm your host, Charlie Roscoe, and if you don't know what this series is and would like to find out a little bit more, make sure you go over to my website, www.charlieroscoe.com. It's got all the details and how to join, how the rules work, etc, etc. Now, race two is a reverse order grid from race one, so that's going to make the race very interesting, and in fact, it's probably time to go down and have a look at the grid now and work our way back. So starting out of pole position, having come last in race one, is Koloki G, followed by Staniel in second position, Hippie Head in third, Risky Devil in fourth place, Moldovich in fifth, then we've got Mojo in sixth, Lethal coming out of seventh, Piosko eighth, Nilsson in 9th and DJ Brain rounding out the top 10, Bilson in 11th, B Par in 12th, then myself 13th, Skater 14th, Speedy Chicken 15th and Old Man having not raced in race 1 started last for race 2. And we are away. It looks like Cloaky G has not got off the line well at all. He's been completely swamped up. Uh, he's already three or four cars back, but it looks like Staniel's uh, quickly taken the lead. Risky Devil up the inside of Hippie Head to grab second. Then it's Hippie. Obviously, Moldovich is there and fighting as well. Mojo's made a good start. Uh, he's, he's up there fairly quickly. As we look a little bit further back in the pack, this, of course, is where all the winners are from race one. Uh, we, we're all going to be fighting to push through. Obviously, I'm back there as well. You can see Ryan in eighth place place currently, DJ Brain behind him. Wilson just getting a little bit squirrely out of that corner. It's a corner that's caught a lot of people out, just trying to squeeze the power on there. Uh, DJ Brain well out wide in the grass there. Might have been a little bit of contact as he re-enters to see if he can recover. I've actually snuck around the outside. Speedy up the inside. Bit of a sandwich. Contact between the two of them. Speedy's been pushed out. Uh, Willie gives him another little shove wide which allows DJ Brain to tuck back into his slipstream. Meanwhile, I managed to sneak through to 11th. As you can see, Willie or Bilson there is in 12th with Speedy Chicken uh, coming up behind in 13th. So there's going to be a hectic battle here. It goes all the way up to 8th place, down to 14th. And as I say, this is where the winners are from race one, <coughs> or at least your top runners, top finishers. Uh, so a lot of the action early on in this race is going to be back here. And we can see Beepar just fighting there up the inside. Maybe a little bit of contact made. Uh, obviously we want to keep this nice and clean and close racing. Everyone's, uh, yeah, everyone's wanting to get forward as soon as they can. But you can see it's just a thick, fast battle with the entire pack here. In fact, side by side with Beepar, he's got the inside line though, so he will be able to hold me out there. Actually, I've got quite, quite sideways there. Bilson's looking to... Uh, to, to gain from that as well. Speedy Chicken around the outside, it's all just thick and fast, so I can't keep up with what's going on. So b -Par and Speedy have got the inside line, Bilson's been pushed out wide and finds himself uh, in a straight line drag, the run to the final corner. In fact, he's got better drive than, than the Flying Chook, so he has taken it. As we go on board with Willy, just see what the action looks like. And Lethal is out wide, that is Ryan. He's uh, unfortunately missed his braking marker, pushed out, ran off onto the gravel. And uh, that is definitely going to be a big setback for his race. We'll see if he can recover from there. But as we look, b -Par's up the inside of me. A little bit of contact made there. Nothing too major. Uh, jump on board with me. You can see b -Par was comfortably able to uh, power on past that. Perfectly legitimate overtake, even though there was a bit of rubbing. You'll notice there was no 10-second penalty awarded. Now, Bilson also got the run on me. Uh, in fact, I'm still fighting in here with b -Par. We're sort of side by side. Willie's keen to get in it. Speedy Chicken just sitting there quietly in the background waiting for this to all go pear-shaped so that he can jump on board and uh, swoop through and gain all the positions back. But from 6th all the way down to 13th, we still have... It, it is tighter than two coats of paint at the moment. Everyone's wanting to get through on everybody else. Uh, what have we got? we got Speedy and, and uh, DJ Brain here. It looks like Speedy might have actually just made a little mistake or run a bit wide because he's just dropped off the back of of Bilson just a little bit. So uh, it gave DJ Brain a bit of a sniff to try and get through. But uh, nonetheless, I'm sure he will recover. The winner of race one did it quite comfortably. So we know he's got the pace there. And uh, and actually have a look at that. He's so good around the last corner. He's almost able to go for the dive on, um, on Moldovich there. But uh, we'll jump back up further forward to the front of the pack and have a look at this. This is from fourth down to 12th now. How hectic is this battle getting? Mojo just pushed out a little bit wide from Piosco there. Nothing on towards the course. It's just uh, track position. And Bilson has gone around in the background. You can see that there. Unfortunately, 
It looks like there, I, I don't know if there was any contact or if he's just, uh, again, it's that corner. That's the one that brings everyone unstuck trying to squeeze the power on. I don't know if it was his own error or if it was a bit of a knock, but either way, it's uh, it's resulted in him facing backwards. And he's got a big task to do now from 15th. He's uh, quite a long way behind Nielsen and Lethal, who in turn are quite a bit behind the pack. So uh, it'll be interesting to keep a, keep an eye on Bilson. He does have the pace, so we'll see if he can come back and uh, recover a decent position. Meanwhile, up front, Hippie Heed and Staniel getting on with business. Uh, now, these were guys that didn't finish that strongly in race one, but... Uh, what a difference it makes when you can be out the front. You're not involved in all this pack battle that we're watching here. And you're able to just focus on your lines, focus on your lap times, uh, do some good, clean racing. And that's what Hippie and Staniel at the moment are up the front doing. Uh, and it's working for them. It's working. Even Risky Devil there has been able to pull away from Piosco. Maybe not quite the pace of Staniel, uh, but he was able to do that. So... We'll continue to watch this battle. It's actually spreading out just a little bit. We've dropped a few off the back, so 6th down to 10th now. Still um, still pretty intense. Everyone's trying to get up the inside there. DJ Brain went up the inside of me. Skater's gone um, as well. Mojo, unfortunately for him, has found himself out on the grass and up against the fence, so <clears throat> probably just cut his exit a bit fine, got on the power a bit early. It pushed it out wide. Uh, so as we shuffle around again in this pack, I'm a little bit sideways there, just trying to get up the inside um, of DJ Brain. It's not served me well. In fact, it's uh, ruined my line. Scatter out very wide, though, on the grass, and around he goes into the fence. You hate to see it. And, uh, and much like Wilson now, he's got a, a big recovery job uh, back there from, from uh, the spin to recover from that. So... Meanwhile, it is still Speedy Chicken, DJ Brain and myself and uh, arguably if we could all stop scrapping with each other we might be able to uh, push on forwards and try and catch 5th place who of course is Beepar uh, who's made a handy little gap but uh, we'll see how we go and uh, a lot of, lot of sideways action here from Speedy Chicken just getting hard on the throttle and uh, DJ Brain actually out very, very wide if Speedy can get a good run out of here he might be a sniff down the front straight but it looks like DJ was able to get uh, a good enough. You can square that corner off uh, as well a little bit. So if you do run wide um, down the straight, if you can square it off and punch punch it hard, get on the power early, you can sort of recover from a from a bad turn there. So uh, speed is still all over the back of him though, and in fact the pace has picked up probably just a little bit. You can see he's pulled just three or four car lengths on me as well. Uh, which I'll try and... Well, actually, I did make up under brakes there, so, uh, yep, that was good to see. <laughs> uh, Speedy Chicken, though, still fighting with DJ Brain, uh, trying to find a way past. Meanwhile, further back, Ryan just having an absolute shocker. He's got sideways mid-corner there. Nielsen has been able to just slide up the inside. And then Bilson, his counterpart, right behind him, too wide. He's had to leave a bit of racing room. Uh, Bilson has done the old over and under there. He... Uh, he had to had to let Lethal take the inside line around the corner, but of course he was able to go from the very outside of the track, tuck it back tight, get on the throttle early, and it fed him past. So already recovering quite nicely there, up to 12th position, uh, looking to overtake Nielsen. Follow up on Old Man there, who wasn't in race one, so unfortunately uh, one of the other competitors dropped out. There was a free spot, and Old Man was able to take that. So he had to start from dead last, and also hasn't had one race practice behind him. Um, so we'll see how he goes as the race wears on. But that is going to be Bilson's uh, next next target once he can clear. So as we look a little bit further through, we're back on board with Speedy Chicken, who has not yet been able to make a move on DJ Brain, but he's he's getting perhaps a little bit more. In fact, they're right up Piosco's uh, backside now, as it were. So the pack is really closed. And actually, as Speedy got pushed a little bit wide earlier on, I was able to uh, capitalise on that, shove it up the inside and take the position 7 for myself. Uh, DJ at the same time has simultaneously been able to go up the inside of Piosco and, uh, and in fact I got the best launch I could there but you can see a lot of oversteer for me which has ruined my drive and it's given the Flying Chook a very good opportunity to uh, use a bit of slipstream. As I said in race one, the slipstream just wasn't that strong in this. Uh, the settings uh, within Gran Turismo were set to real, but there just wasn't a lot of toe. So whether or not that's the aerodynamics of the car or lack thereof, um, or whether or not it's just you know the pace we're going, either way, there's not a big toe down that back straight to take advantage of. So as you can see, Speedy wasn't able to get back past me. 
Now up for the podium battle, uh, Bipar is right with Risky Devil and we're also approaching uh, pit, the pit window. Lap 9 is probably the first lap where people are going to be thinking of diving. Race 1 was 18 laps long, so we can presume race 2 is going to be about the same length, therefore lap 9 is your midway point of the race and uh, and quite potentially a good tactic. We saw it used well to try and get the undercut uh, in race 1. So you can see DJ is already gapped a little bit on Piosco once he'd gone past. And as we ride on board with myself, um, again, you can see a lack of slipstream there. But it looks like the front guys are going to jump in. We've got Risky Devil, Staniel, Hippie Heed, and uh, Hippie and Staniel, of course, first and second. So the leaders were the first to dive in the pits. And uh, whether or not that was a tactic against each other, uh, I'm not too sure. But they've both gone in together. And... Um, and we'll see how that pans out. Anyway, they're having quite a good race uh, as we as we sort of join back on board. The, the scrap has gone up, obviously, with those couple of guys pitting. So it's now second to fifth place that we're talking about. And uh, DJ Brain leading the way with Piosco still there. I'm desperately trying to find a path uh, past him. He's actually gone out wide onto the grass there. So a lack of drive. I've had to go all the way around the outside, but I have managed to uh, get the job done. Speedy Chicken's also going to be looking to fire there. And actually a big moment for DJ Brain, who got well sideways under power coming out of that, that fateful turn that seems to be catching uh, everyone out at the moment. It's uh, just the way it sort of pulls, tucks in left. Um, you've got to give it that extra turn of the wheel as you're trying to build build power and throttle on uh, it spits the back out a lot but uh, you can see this is pretty much the lap where just about everybody else has gone into has gone into the pits um, to get that pit stop done so we can finally see where people uh, can come out of the wash speedy chicken you'll notice though the winner of race one has continued on decided to stick with to stick with the uh the race at the moment going for an overcut so rather than an undercut whereby you pit first get the fresh tires and get out and drop a hot lap time it's really the first time speedy has been released into uh, free air and we know he's got the pace we saw that in race one so i'd imagine that uh what was going through his head was i won't pit with everyone else and i'll give myself that one flying lap that in lap just to punch it out as hard as i can and see if i can gain some positions because he was stuck back uh behind me remember before before that round of pit stop. So we'll see how we go. The other thing that uh, we didn't really think about or I haven't discussed is uh, fuel savings. I don't really know if anyone, I, I didn't really take much of a fuel saving strategy on this. Probably a few short shifts as we see Speedy having completed that lap, um, ducked in to be, I think the last person that does actually pit uh, to, to go into the pits. So we'll see where he comes out of the wash and if it was advantageous, he might've been able to save some fuel while he was stuck back in the pack. And of course, as I say, um, one red hot lap he was able to put in on the in lap. And, uh, and we'll see where he comes out of the pits now, as this is the pack that he was fighting with. Comes around to join the front straight. He should hopefully at least be able to, to jump uh, DJ Brain, who's dropped off a bit. Himself and Piosco are still there. I'm still battling behind him. And finally, I do make the move and take that seventh position off Piosco. But what you'll see just up uh, ahead of us there in fifth position is Speedy Chicken. So his tactic, his overcut, staying out for one more flying lap. Um, has definitely paid off for him as well as probably a little bit of fuel saving because I, I came out of the pits myself behind P.O.'s guide. The pace didn't really pick up too much. You can see I've just pulled a few tents. Actually, DJ Brain just giving P.O.'s guide a big helping hand out onto the grass and, uh, and it's not got any better for P.O.'s guide. He's pulled back on the track, uh, floored the throttle, which everyone is so tempted to do once you've been off uh, on the grass and it's just spat the back of the car out. Lost a big chunk of time there, but... Um, getting back to getting back to the overcut from Speedy, uh, and he's already made a good good way there because he's gone past Old Man, who, by the way, is yet to pit. So his fifth position hasn't pitted yet. Started last on the grid. Speedy was able to make light work, so it's just been a magnificent tactic for Speedy. Um, you can see the gap he's got mid corner there. I'm just entering the corner now. He was behind me before the pit, so uh, a very very good tactic. It's worked. It's got him in the third place, and now he sets off catching these two gentlemen here hippie head in first position that's just been getting on with the race since the very beginning coming out of pole position staniel uh, i believe started third position off the top of my head second or third one or the other and uh, both of them have just really knuckled down put some good consistent lap times in 
and um, they've got a really good gap. They haven't had to fight, and as I say, they they weren't at the top of the uh, the finishing positions of race one. But it makes such a difference when you don't have to focus on fighting and scrapping. You can just concentrate on what you're doing, concentrate on your lap times, uh, and and get on with that. So Speedy is joined currently by B Par. Uh, actually, that might have that that was the pass. We've missed the pass there. So Speedy Chicken has actually gone up the inside of B Par, and it's now you can see that straight away. One hundred one point zero, which I believe is the fastest lap of the race at this point. Very very close to dropping into the uh, one minutes. And he's, he's got a big task. If you sort of look at the mini map up the top right hand corner there uh, of Smitty Chicken, there is quite a big gap uh, back to him from the front two. But you never know, he's got probably a good one, one to two seconds per lap of pace over those two. So it's going to be a good battle to see uh, how they go. And also if Mojo can continue on. In the background there, you can see Old Man just running off from eighth position. I would imagine he's starting to struggle with those tyres. They are 14 laps old. And uh, there must be some really serious fuel conservation going on in that car because I personally was starting to get low on petrol. In fact, I was basically out of petrol when I pitted. So he must be, uh, yeah, he must be really focusing on fuel uh, conservation. If he's going to try and get through this race, you've seen there in ninth position. If he's going to get through this race without stopping uh, for a pit stop, I, uh, I do fear that he might run out of pace. And again, you can see... Uh, just just under grip. Willie's on much, much newer tyres. Uh, full fuel burn and he's just comfortably able to, to breeze past him. So I'm not sure if it's a tactic that's uh, going to work for old man. But nonetheless, it's good to see someone try something different. You never know. It's one of those, it's what I call a hero move. And that is if you pull it off, you look like a hero. If you get a really, really good position from last place and it's because you managed to do the race without pitting, uh, you're sort of the talk of the town, if you if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, everyone's um, everyone's always very impressed with moves like that. But unfortunately, with hero moves, if it doesn't go your way, uh, it goes the other way. Then they usually turn out to be a bit more disastrous than taking a much more um, conservative strategy, which uh, is what the the rest of us basically did. Speed is really pulling away from Bpar now, and um, that gap is definitely as they go onto the front straight. You can already see how close he is starting to get to Staniel and Hippie Heed there. So the pressure is going to be starting to, to pile on. And quite a big gap uh, between Bpar and myself in fifth place. I have managed to get past Risky Devil. Uh, so I am currently in hot pursuit. And as we go a little bit further back, old man still just a bit of a sitting duck there. He doesn't have the tyre, um, the, the grip and he doesn't have the uh, the strong fuel burn to even hold it down the straight. So Piosco and Nielsen just easily able to cruise on past old man there. Um, you hate to see it, you really do. And he's kind of in that pickle now, whereas if he pitted, he's going to lose, he's going to go straight back to, to virtually last because he's already 12th and you can see struggling under grip there. He comes out, tries to accelerate on and it spits out sideways. It's... Um, yeah, just a bit of an unfortunate uh, unfortunate move. Could have been sensational. Unfortunately, it wasn't. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that Staniel actually just ducked in the pits again there. So Staniel obviously didn't fuel up enough. Uh, we're on lap 16, so there's only two laps to go. The fact that Staniel has gone back into the pits, here he is here, uh, to get more fuel. He's getting fresh tyres as well, and, and you may as well, I suppose. Uh, but, yeah, he's, he's gone in for a little bit of fuel, so I can only imagine he actually short-fueled a little bit, which is really, really sad to see because um, he, as I say, didn't have a strong finishing position in race one. He's been second for the entire race, and even though Speedy Chicken was bearing down on him uh, and may have been able to take the fight to him by the end of the race, uh, it is it is a real shame to see that, unfortunately, a second place is... Uh, Second place has gone awry, gone adrift for Staniel. But Hippie's still fighting along at the front. Speed is going to do his best, but with just this and the next lap to go, I feel like he's going to struggle to bridge the gap. Back here in the mid-pack, everything has stabilised a little bit. Um, I'm still in fourth place, pushing as hard as I can to catch b -par and grab that uh, last podium position. Someone going off in the background there didn't quite catch who that was. Um, but uh, rejoining back to Wilson, you'll remember here, or Willie Bilson. Um, he's got that many names, this bloke, I'll tell you what. But 
going back to him, bearing in mind that he spun at the start of the race, dropped back to 15th position and was quite a long way behind. So as we start the last lap, he is on 7th. He's coming up very, very hot behind DJ Brain, who looks to be struggling with grip a bit. So already a pretty good recovery. And if he can do um, any more than that, a 6th place would be fantastic uh, for him. So here we go. We'll jump on board with him as he uh, pressurizes DJ Brain who looks just to be struggling a bit with tie grip. Uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see Willie's laps have been really strong. He dropped a 1 minute 0.6, which actually was probably the fastest lap of the race, um, unless Speedy has beaten it. But uh, that, that was certainly a red-hot lap, but a lot of 101s there, uh, whereas a lot of the other people, DJ Brain here and such, have been the 102s, 103s. So his pace is good. Side by side, he got a really good run out of that turn and he's actually just taken six on the straight he's got the inside line for the final turn so he is going to be able to uh to maintain that and uh and start the final lap whereby he doesn't have a huge gap to catch up to bpar in fifth either someone else who's in fact bpar not going particularly fast there obviously struggling possibly with fuel as well on a maximum fuel conservation lap to try and get home because Bilson has just comfortably cruised on past him and taken fifth position which is a really really good recovery from 15th and that very very early early spin now skater who came second in race one has not quite had the race he was probably hoping for still uh still back battling with the pack uh, him and piosco putting up an absolute gem of a battle uh definitely some uh Definitely some interesting things happening there with them going inside each other, and that just seems to be a thing. I think it's a bit of a lag. Uh, ghosting is actually turned off, but uh, I believe that if the lag is not quite where it should be, the game does do this a little bit. So anyway, a very intimate moment shared by those two. Congratulations to Hippie, who uh, goes on to win the race, of course. Speedy Chicken in second place. I did manage to grab third there. Um, Risky Devil actually grabbed fourth, so Beepa are obviously trying to save. Um, save fuel. Uh, a great recovery from Bilson to come from 15th back to 5th. Uh, DJ Brain in 7th and it was actually Bipa who got very wide on the last turn to take 6th. Mojo in 8th. Skater absolutely spraying across the line to take 9th. Nielsen in 10th. We've got Piosco in 11th. Daniel uh, coming across the line in 12th as well. So that's where the first two packs sort of finish and, uh, and as we come around and watch Ryan who had a pretty lonely race in the end um, pick up a 13th spot. Moldovich back in 14th who uh, carried on like a trooper. You can see from the damage on his car he got uh, got involved uh, pretty heavily fairly early on. So as long as he had fun, he's actually slowed right down there at the, the line. I'm not sure if he's uh, waiting to give a position away or what the go is there. But anyway, he did that, waving to his teammate and his mum probably. But um, that is the end of race two. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Remember to check everything out on my website, uh, charlieroscoe.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.